welcome to this week's edition of the Camogie Report podcast. We are delighted to be out and about. We're here uh, this evening in Golden Bridge with Bally Bacon Grange Camogie Club. Uh, we're going to chat to lots of different people here involved in the club, get a real feel for the club here, a real vibrant, uh, progressive club here in South Tipperary. Um, who better off to start off with and speak to first then? One of the founding members of the club and current vice chairperson, uh, Grainne O'Leary. Grainne, we're delighted to be down here. Thanks very much for having us. We're delighted to have you and a warm welcome to yourself and Kevin for making the trip down to the most southerly club here in Tipperary. So we're delighted to have you. Fantastic. Thanks very much. Um, Grainne, look, it's a hive of activity here this evening. There's loads happening. There's training going on. Um, I met you, met you last night in the County Camoy grounds under 14A County Final. Right. Um, like I said, a real progressive, vibrant club. It's hard to believe that this wasn't always the case and that you're only in existence 10 years. And before 2012, there was no camogie down in Ballybacon. So... Tell us a bit how it all started off. No, there wasn't any camogie. Um, there was a hurling, there was hurling clubs here, hundred years or more. And uh, so I suppose there was nothing for the girls. We had, there was football at the other end of the parish, but nothing here, no camogie, no nothing. So what happened was a lot of the young girls, four, five, six year olds, started coming to the boys' training, yeah. under six training, because you know obviously they can play away. But you know there came a time when there was actually more girls here than boys at the at the boys' training. So in fairness to the men in, in the men's club, said, look lads. You're going to have to kind of set up your own club here and under the advice of Father Pat Moore and God rest him he was a stalwart here of underage hurling all through the years he was uh, he brought every 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 young fella in the parish uh, served their time with Father Pat so he said he gives a hand to help us out with the coach and because you know it was a complete new venture and uh, a lot of us were, were footballers as opposed to camogie players and um, so look that was how it started so we literally started up myself uh, Yvonne Mason and Sinead English. Sinead is here tonight actually, she's down there um, making tea um, and the rest is history. That first year, 2012, we had an under 18, we had nine girls and uh, we played a few blitzes and did a few things but really it was in 2013 when we properly affiliated and in that February we had a, a come and try it day and um, so put out the word to the schools you know, in the parish and uh, we were blown away on that Monday night and um, we had I think about 130 girls landed all ages just landed to, to the field in a way we didn't really know what to do with them but we were kind of set up and we just had a few drills and we got a few uh, famous people came and you know it was a great night we gave them all a certificate of participation and that's where it started so that year we went to the under 8s under 10 blitzes and we had an under 12 team um, and for I suppose started from there and the current uh, sixes and eights of now are our minor team and they're the beginning of our first adult team which we started last year the first year to have an adult team you know so it's been it's been a it, it's been a great journey um you know with 10 years it's gone in the absolute blink of an eye and you know someone said to me you know why is it so successful to me i think the success of it was that it's an open door and you always need new people every year you get new people in new coaches because you know there's new thinking fresh thinking and everybody has something to offer and i think that has really been the key and just to support all the coaches because a lot of them are parents so you know we get in people to coach the coaches over the years every year we do it for maybe six or eight weeks go around to all the coaches and all the groups and you know just to help out with the coaching of the coaches like and to give them the confidence and i suppose you know we, when we set out you know gino gorman was our pro of the day and we had a five-year plan you know that we might try and win something, you know, and I suppose it's not always about winning, but it does set you up maybe that, yeah. you know, to try and win something. But after three years, we won an under 12 county final and it was like winning a senior All-Ireland, mm. honest to God, it was just, the whole parish was up in the rag and it was in the old system where it was A, B, C or whatever, like, so, you know, it was a hard fought um, contest or whatever. And look, it was great to win it. And I suppose we just kicked on from there. And in the year when all the clubs in Tipperary were in Fela, you know, it was again another bit of history for the under 14s of that year. I think it was always 19 or 2015. You know, and we had a couple of games here, and again, that just really spurred us on as a camogie club because it was in the early days, like we were yeah. only three or four years out, and it just got loads of more girls involved. And I think that was the key, like just to keep getting involved. And I suppose 10 years in now, it's the norm. Yeah. And I think that, that that's kind of where we're at, like, do you know and, what I mean? And I suppose you're a Valley Bacon woman born and bred yeah. and I know your father was a chairperson of the J club for many years yeah. so your, your first passion was hurling and camogie but you never you didn't have a club to play with I know you played football so I suppose in a sense you didn't want history repeating itself with your daughter no that's exactly it like I mean I didn't pick up I used to play tip away here with the lads and you know and 
when I went to Dublin nursing, I joined the club in Dublin and only played camogie then. But I suppose I just felt strongly that we should have a camogie club down here when my own daughter was four and she was coming over training with the boys. Like it wasn't, it wasn't right. Like cause there was loads of girls her age that were interested and they're all still playing. So I suppose, yeah, it's just great now to have a club here. And I suppose I'll just go back briefly to, I think 2000, 2001, they did have a minor team here, but they only had a minor team and it didn't last yeah. because they'd not coming through. Like, so we kind of said, look, we started underage and then at least every year in, year out, like with sixes, eights and tens okay. and twelves, and they're coming all the time. You have a, you have a con like any club, like, you know, they're coming all the time. Whereas when you started adult, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really happen yeah. and it didn't happen. So. I you suppose know. anyone watching this will, will know you as uh, the Camogie Development Officer in Tipperary. That's right. And I suppose you do a lot of work now with, with new clubs setting up and you know starting from scratch like Bally Bacon did. Yeah. But I suppose there must be real pride um, you know, for yourself to see, you know, like you said, you started from nothing and to see the way uh, the club is today. Look, it's great to see you come down here. Monday night is our night and you know we're training here all age groups till half nine, ten o'clock tonight. And I suppose, you know, it was a big milestone last year to have an adult team because yeah. you know that's your goal you know nobody remembers winning 12 14s or whatever because you're you're building for when you get to adult that's what you know the pinnacle of your of your club is when you have an adult club like and to drive on that so yeah look and i suppose it's lovely i love seeing new clubs ringing me up saying you know can you give us a hand what did you do you know because yeah. i suppose you can share your experience yeah. and help them on their journey because small things make a big difference do you know what i mean like little bits of advice that we would have got and i have to say people in the hurling club at the time um, were very very helpful and like we're the one club now belly bait and grange hurling and camogie club and you know the current chairman um james english and current juvenile chairman brendan cummins they're all very helpful and you know we just work as one now yeah so you know it is great for all the girls like i mean i think that's the that, that's the biggest thing like over the years like five years in a row we've had two under 12 teams two under 14 teams you know like so like it's huge numbers and i suppose now it's 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 kind of a norm to play in camogie and I think that's that's when we started out that's what we wanted. Do you know that wouldn't be just for a handful that it's for everybody. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And um, we're just going to bring in so uh, Pat McGrath, he's the current chairperson of the club. Okay. Just, so Pat, we're chatting there to um, Gronish, a good history of the club. So take us up to I suppose present day. What kind of numbers and teams have you at the moment? Um, roughly number wise, I think we're up around 120 girls. Um, we're, we're fielding all teams from sixes, eights, tens, twelves, fourteens, sixteens, um, minor and, and junior, which is fantastic. Um, as it's our, our second year starting with a junior team, so so that's positive, like, you know, yeah. in my eyes, that's very positive in this club anyway. And because I suppose the club is only in existence in 2012, so the junior team must be made up of some adults Ju that were maybe took it up for the first time or yeah, they there's a, elsewhere? Or? Yeah, there's a lot of mammies after coming back, I suppose we call it, and there's a lot of girls that, yeah, we're, we're probably... They were playing with other clubs, there was a few of them and they came back to us again like but numbers are kind of met up from, from we have a few young girls involved as well but like our, we'd say we had two 14s, two 12 teams that'll fizzle into like there'll probably be another two years I'd say before our junior team will be strong but I'd have, I'd have no doubt that they will be very competitive and very strong when they get there like Brilliant yeah and going you touched on as well the one club ethos here um, you know it's I suppose it's it's something that we're going to see more and more down the line it, with the GA as you know as talks of becoming all the one association with Camogie and Ladies Football so how has that worked for you? We're, we're one club here like with the boys and with the men there like to be honest we get on so well um, and I get on very well with James English which is positive like because if you don't have that I don't think you'd have respect from either side and um, I know at times it's hard to get the feel for training and all but like we, we bang mistress to each other there and, and there's never any problem with them and it's very good like and the boys and girls mix a lot as well we have a couple of things going on in the club at the minute where they're, they're involved in with helping out and, and it's very positive and, and it's good to see a different side to the girls rather than just having them on the field training and playing matches you can actually get into their lives and see exactly what they're like and they're lovely people really are like boys and girls on both sides and I suppose a big initiative here, something that I know you're very proud of, is the hurling and camogie and fun for uh, kids with special needs. Yeah, special needs. yeah, very positive. Um, started it going back, I'd say, a couple of weeks ago, and um, numbers are huge. And like, you can do all the training you want, I suppose, in this field. 
I've been here a long time now with, with a lot of the underage teams, even my own two daughters. But when you, you come in here like and you train and do that, but when you bring in these kids in here and see the smiles on their face and you might only have it on for an hour and a half and you're nearly gone into the third hour and you're wondering they're still around the place and having fun, it's very positive. And it's an opening I, I'd say that every club should probably get involved with if they could because they're the people that really matter in clubs as well. It's not just about you or I, it's about all them little people as well. Like, and it's fantastic to see you really is. And I know that group is here this evening, so we'll take a spin up yeah, and, and no problem. chat to a few people. Yep. Now, I'm joined now by some of the stars of Bally Bacon Grange. So first up here, what's your name? Amy McCarthy. Now, Amy, you come down here every Saturday morning, is it? With yeah. Neve and all the helpers? Yeah. And what do you like about it? Um, I like playing all the games. Brilliant. And what kind of games do you play? Um, I play soccer and hurling and, and whatever else is there. Very good. And are the coaches and the volunteers, are they nice? Yeah. Do they ever give out to you? No. They're very nice, are they? Yeah. And what about this jersey here? What jersey are you wearing? Any bacon jersey. And what are the colours? Green and? Green and yellow. And are they the best colours in Tipperary? Very good. And now, here's another here's right? another star of Valley Bacon. What's your name? Uh, Tristan. Tristan. And do you like coming training here? Uh, n not training. That's my brother. Oh, sorry. What do you what do you come here? You do playing and uh, fun yeah, games. Yeah, playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw I'm you on the ground down. here. What are you doing here? Lying down. What? Were well, you asleep? Yes. Having a rest? <laughs> yep, napping. Are you supposed to? Are you supposed to be? Oh, you're having a little nap. That's important, isn't it? Taking my rest so I can run around. Oh, good idea. <laughs> good idea. <laughs> you know. And come here. Who helps out with 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 the the coaching and the games? Uh, do you know any of their names? Neve. Neve. And a lot of other people. And a lot of other people. And there's a lot of young boys and girls, I think they're around 16, and, the teenagers. And, and my brother was having really fun. Oh, when, good. Then my little brother was here. He he, he learned he, he learned how to do hurling. He, he took up hurling. Oh. And now he does hurling here. Very good. And do you go watch the hurling matches? Uh, yes. Yes. Good. Sometimes, sometimes I stay in the car. Sometimes I go and watch. And when you're at the match, what do you say? Do you say, up belly bacon? Just, just go Logan. <laughs> oh, very good. Well done. Right. Next up now we have, what's your name? David. And this is your father, Pat. Pat, yeah. How are you? Good, thank good. you. Yeah. And David, do you enjoy coming down to Valley Bacon? Yes, I do. And what do you like doing down here? Oh, playing games and playing with my friends. <laughs> good. And do a lot of your friends come here as well? Yeah. And what's this here over here? Connect 4 thing, is it? Yeah, it's Connect 4. And is that good fun? Yeah, one of the popular games in the universe. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And I, do you do some water games as well? Yeah. What do you do? Throw water at each other? Well, no, we like there's like a big square of water. So we like pull the water and like pour it and see how many splash it takes. Oh, very good. Excellent. You like that one? Is yeah. that your favourite one? Yeah. Brilliant. And Pat, you must enjoy coming down here as well. I do. I love it because, look, he enjoys it. All the kids enjoy it. He hasn't missed that. Saturday here, he's here again tonight. So Brilliant. Great, love it. great commitment there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, there is. Look, I'll be honest, as a parent of a child with needs, um, inclusion is a big thing. There's not a lot of activities they can, you know, get to with big yeah. groups like these social groups. So socialising is important too. Look, I just want to say it's been brilliant for him. I've enjoyed it and I want to thank all the guys who have made it happen, the helpers and all the team. They've a lot of them giving up their own time just to be here for these kids. So look, personally, I just want to say thanks to them all. Thanks, guys. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Thank we'll let you get back to your. We have another guy here. What's your name? Jack McCarthy. And and who's your? What's your sister's name? Amy McCarthy. And is she bigger or smaller than you? Big. Very good. And you come down here and play with, with Amy and all your friends. Yeah. And what kind of games do you like doing? Football and soccer. Now, do you see Kevin's camera? Look. You yeah. want to give a wave to the camera? <laughs> and does your mom come down here as well? Yeah. Uh, who 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 does the coaching with you? Do you know any of their names? Uh, Neve. Neve. Neve must be the cross one. She, everyone knows her name. Yeah. Or is she the best? Uh, is she the best fun? Yeah. And what games do you like doing? Soccer. Soccer. And you do some hurling. Yeah. Very good. And what's the best thing about coming down here? Um, soccer. Soccer. Brilliant. I think this guy's going to be a great soccer player. Uh, what's your name? Caleb. Caleb, you come down. The sport and football, don't you? Yeah. And do you like it? Yeah. And do you meet some of your friends? Yeah. And what are your friends' names? David. David. And what about coaches? Who are your coaches? Think of any of your coaches' names. No. 
Is Neve a coach? Yeah. Is she? Yeah. Is she a good coach? Yeah, she's funny. <laughs> and you have good fun here, do you? Yeah. And is that your Hurley? Yeah. Good stuff. I'll talk to you again, okay? Good I'm joined now by PRO of the club, Neve Carrigan. Neve, obviously you're a big volunteer as well uh, with the children with additional needs because they all mentioned your name when I asked them uh, who helps out. So I know from talking to you before, it's a huge part of the club and it means a lot to you. Yeah, do you know, um, it's, it's, it's in my work line. So uh, deep down inside me, I absolutely love it. Um, love the kids, but I must say the whole club in general has made it so easy. And as the club, um, as the PRO, like, I'd like to thank everyone for making it so easy. And I think I get the feel it's something you're very proud of here in Ballybacon. Absolutely, 100%. There's not many places you can bring kids with additional needs anymore. And to see the kids smiling and the parents smiling going out every Saturday is just... There's no words for it. Yeah, and it's just, I suppose it's so inclusive here in Ballybacon. And, you know, I suppose GA is for everyone, Camogie is for everyone. And there's no reason why uh, kids with additional needs can't be involved in clubs. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's all about Camogie and Hurling. But, like, we've, we've lots of games here and... Um, if kids, we have different stations and they love it. The same thing every week. They absolutely love it. Get a ball, get a hurley. And all our younger volunteers who are with Kobe um, play along with them and they just they just love it. And for other clubs out there, I'm sure there's other clubs thinking about setting up. Maybe they're a bit daunted by the whole thing. What would you say to them? Um, yeah, like we had another club that came out to us. Um, St Mary's in Clamel and again he couldn't uh, uh, he couldn't have speak Michael he couldn't speak highly about how you feel when it happens yeah and uh, trust me there was people here and they were nervous but now if you ask them they love it and highly recommended inclusion is very important for all clubs I would highly recommend it brilliant thanks very much yeah, no Okay, so we're joined now by some of the younger volunteers here, um, the minors and under 16s. Um, we mentioned earlier on the, I suppose, the camogie and hurling fun for kids with addition needs couldn't happen without the volunteers. A lot of volunteers uh, are needed every time there's a session. So, uh, girls, I suppose, first of all, how did you get involved? It's just, were you asked to come down, was it, or what happened there? Yeah, I asked and we didn't mind showing up, so. And I suppose, how are you finding it so far? Um, I really enjoy it. And I suppose kind of an eye opener as well, I'd say. Yeah, so. it is. It's really good now. Like just to see the kids, the smiles on their faces, even the gates, what it's all about. Like, okay. Brilliant. And we've met a few of the kids already this evening. Uh, lovely kids. They seem to really enjoy uh, everything that's happening here in Ballybacon. Yeah, they love it so much. All of them. They get interactive with everything, so it's good. And what kind of what kind of activities do you do? Uh, we can do like a football or a parachute or something. Very good. And I'm sure there's other clubs out there might be thinking of uh, setting up something similar in the in their own GA club. Would you encourage them to do that? Uh, yeah, hopefully, because it's very good to see the kids like um, that's here and everything. And would you recommend other people volunteering and getting involved? Yeah, I recommend everyone to get involved here. Everything. Brilliant. And I suppose uh, I think you're taking a break now for a few weeks, is it? Yeah. And then you'll probably miss it, and you'll be looking forward to coming back. Oh, it'll be great when we come back. Very good. And uh, what kind of activities do you do again, Claudette? Uh, we do like Connect Four and soccer and we play like games with the rugby. Oh, so. the tackle bags. Yeah. Yeah. So they seem to be a lot of fun. They seem yeah, to be yeah, good. They're people's favourites, all right. I don't know they're trying to take us out yeah. or take each other out. <laughs> very good, very good. Well, guys, great to meet you here tonight and uh, thanks very much for chatting to us and for all the work you do here in the club. Best amongst all the women is Scott here, another volunteer. Uh, Scott, I know the, the guys in the club here speak very highly of you. They say you're now here every week helping out. You obviously enjoy it. Oh, I do enjoy it. It's very good. And is um, it's probably, as, as we mentioned there, it's a bit of an eye-opener, uh, you know, working with kids with additional needs. Uh, yeah, um, uh, very uh, happy to do it. Very easy. It's not as hard as you think, though. And it's probably, probably find it rewarding as well. Yeah. <laughs> Spilling his tea on me here now. <laughs> wind is blowing, blowing us everywhere but um so like you know I suppose the kids obviously like you know uh drawn towards the teenagers and l love being involved and playing with games with you yeah they love playing games because they like to go up to us and all that so. and it's nice to, to volunteer and help out and give something back to the community yeah i, I like doing it yeah come on thanks so i'm joined now by marie mason marie is a parent here uh amy and jack are two kids that um 
take part in the fun and hurling um, and camogie for uh, children with additional needs. So Marie, how have you found the whole experiences since the start up here in Ballybacon? It's just been fantastic. As a parent, two children with additional needs myself, it's just, I think it's one of the best things the club has ever done. Um, all the volunteers have been amazing. The kids, our younger volunteers, the kids absolutely love them. And we all just come away buzzing out from it on a, on a Saturday morning. So what exactly goes on? Like we're having a look here. There's loads of, um, I suppose, equipment out. There's cones, yeah. there's lots of games, kind of games and fun. And yeah, and a lot of water play as well when the weather permits. Um, there's a joint connect four, there's a lot of hurling, a lot of football goes on. The younger volunteers are fantastic at involving them in all the games. Yeah, so I yeah. know Grania mentioned before that only for the under 16 boys and girls yeah. this couldn't happen because obviously no, you need a lot of volunteers. Not, because the kids are drawn to them yeah. and just they just really immerse themselves in it and they just work fantastic with the kids with additional needs. Brilliant. And I know it usually happens on a Saturday morning. I know you're down here, especially this evening while we're here. But I suppose, is it something that Amy and Jack look forward to Absolutely. every Saturday? Absolutely, I love it. And it's finished you now last Saturday for the summer. And they'll definitely be looking forward to it starting up again at the end of August. Brilliant. And yeah. Yeah, do you think it's helped their development and Absolutely. social skills? Absolutely. And, and it's just immersed them into the community and into the club. Everybody knows them through it. And yeah, they just absolutely love it. love coming down. And I know from uh, chatting to Gronia and chatting to Neve that they speak so highly and so passionately about it that, you know, they, I suppose it's very rewarding for them. I think they're getting as much out of it as, as probably absolutely. the kids are getting out of it. We all come away buzzing from it. It's just fantastic. It's more rewarding for us now than the kids. Like everybody yeah. just is really enjoying it. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Yeah, yeah we lots of talented camogie players here. We also have talented uh, dancers. Uh, don't just take my word for it. Let's see it for yourself. It's Anna English, uh, Barry Bacon Grange under 14 camogie player and Irish dancer. <laughs> Secretary of the Camogie Club here, Rosaline O'Leary. Rosaline, I suppose you're the woman, uh, I suppose, that keeps the day-to-day -day running of the club going. Uh, yeah, do my best. <laughs> and what kind of, I suppose, for people that don't know, what, what what's the work involved in the secretary? What kind of emails and phone calls and fixtures and emails and phone calls and contacting other clubs about fixtures and arranging games, arranging games and referees and. Everything else. Yeah, keeps you uh, keeps you busy. Well, it keeps it keeps me busy, but I enjoy it. I have to say, I do enjoy it. And I suppose you're involved in the club for a long time before with the with the hurling club, was it? Yeah, I'm involved with the Camogie club since it started, and I was involved. I'm ju also juvenile secretary of the the hurling club. Today as well. Yeah, yeah. You like work, don't you? I do. I'm a <laughs> I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> it sounds like it. it sounds I'd not been sick to do one thing, never mind two things. But I suppose there's a great buzz here, a great community spirit here in Ballybick. Absolutely, and it's great. We're all, it, it's brilliant to be honest. And it's great to be involved in such a, a great, with a great bunch of people to be fair to. Brilliant. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. So it's a Monday night here in Ballybacon and as you can see we have four men here all here volunteering, helping out, involved in the, the Hurling Club and the Camogie Club here. Uh, James English, you're the chairman of the of the Hurling Club but uh, we mentioned it before, it's a one club uh, ethos here really, isn't it? Yeah, we're um, Hurling and Camogie, uh, we're all together, we've been like that now with the last number of years. And uh, we uh, we grow together, and with every development we're doing, fundraising, whatever it is, we do it together. And piano just makes so much more sense, doesn't it? Yeah, well, it makes life easier. The more people you have involved, no matter what way you're running things, it's better that way. Anyway, that's yeah. the way we see it. Anyway. And I suppose there's been loads of praise here tonight, and uh, talk and about. Uh, the hurling and camogie and fun for children with additional needs and it can't happen without the likes of you the lads all here volunteering I know that's a big part you know you can't you have to have so many volunteers ratio per kids and stewards here on on, on the busy roads now yeah we well we do the simple things here Brian Barry Johnny Alan myself we, we look after the road the very good people are inside doing the right job uh, with the children with the needs 
Very good. And lads, what's you all obviously obviously enjoy being part of the club here. Don't be running away now from the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is great enjoyment down here. It is it is great to see all the kids down here. It is nearly every night of the week now we have we've kids down here training. And I suppose the, the Saturday mornings we have the, the kids with additional needs and, and the camogie and uh, hurling for fun. So it is great to see. It's great community spirit down here. Brilliant stuff. Really hard. And what's your coach's names? Emma, Sean, Jessica, and Marie. Very good. And who's the best camogie player in Bally Bacon? Um, me. Yeah, I'm well done. Okay, okay, what's your name? Jesse. And who, what age group do you play? Um, Under six. Under sixes. And do you like scoring goals or do you like in the backs? Backs. Do you? And come here, are you in school? Yeah. What school are you in? Play school. Play school? Well, you're very young out training. Fair play to you. You're all in play school. Is that, the, is that the secret in Bally Bacon? You start you young, is it? <laughs> yeah. When did you start playing training with Bally Bacon when you were two? No. <laughs> <laughs> what? This is your third year training with Bally Bacon. <laughs> Good girl. And come here, what are your coaches' names? Um, Emma. And Sean, is it? Yeah. And Jessica. Jessica. And come here, who's the crosses? Jessica Cross? <laughs> or Sean Cross? Sean Cross. <laughs> None of the cross. <laughs> and come here, who's the best who's the best camogie player in Bally Bacon? Uh me. You! Good girl! You're not sure confidence around here. And where's Poppy? Poppy. Come here, what do you like about coming training here? Uh meeting your friends? In school. Good girl. And let me see your Hurley. What colour is your grip? Uh, orange, is it? What? No, orange and green. Very good. And do you play when you're at home as well? Do you practice at home? And who do you practice with at home? Mom. Your mum. Very good. And no, are you going to play Camogie with Bally Bacon until you're eight Yeah. Forever? Yeah. Are you going to play forever? Delicate. What? Delicate twins. Oh, very good. Yeah. Right, come here, are we going to shout up Bally Bacon? Up Bally Bacon! Uh, you can shout louder than that. Up Bally Bacon! And lift up your hurlies really high. Don't hit anyone. Up Bally Bacon! Now by Owen he's one of the coaches here in the club. Oh, uh, what age category are you coaching? Uh, we're under eight now tonight. Under eight, very good. Yes. And uh, I think you're a new coach here, are you? A new coach now, yeah. I blow into the parish, so it's my first year with it. And my daughter's obviously come up from under six this year, so I'm giving a dig out. Very good, man. Great so. stuff. And I'd say your daughter likes having Daddy there coaching too. She does now, yeah. Has its ups and downs, but she's enjoying it anyway. And I can keep an eye on her, you know, so it's good crack. And she has a few of her friends here as well, so it's great. Great okay. old spirit there, you know. And under ace then, there's probably lots of blitzes happening, isn't there? Lots of blitzes. Oh yeah, we would have done a few with under sixes before the COVID now, but um, and then we had a big one up in Dr. 
Farmers Park last year. So I think we've two or three done so far this year, and another few to come as well. So and the kids love the blitzes, don't they? Absolutely love it. Love it. Yeah. getting to play against kids from other schools in the locality as well. You know, so they're well into it now. Yeah, really enjoying it. And I suppose as the year goes on, you're probably seeing improvement and girls getting more confident in themselves. Getting more confident now, but I suppose at this age, it's just to kind of get them enjoying themselves, really. You know, yeah. get them out and you know get the basics into them. Practice the jab lifting and striking and stuff like that. So kind of preparing them then for when they go up to under 10s, you know. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Owen. So it's been a brilliant evening here so far in Ballymake. It's so much going on, meeting loads of people, loads of players, great characters. Um, but I suppose there's a few other initiatives that we want to just touch on. Uh, Gráinne, you mentioned before the walking club here. Yeah, um, I suppose, Ger, we started walking there. It was an initiative from Crow Park about three years ago. That you walk a uh, lap a day for October. So um, basically, what it is what it says in the tin. You walk one lap of the field every night. So by the time you get to night 26, you're 26 laps of the field, night 31, Halloween night, 31 laps. So we did that for charity about three years ago. So then with COVID, we couldn't do it. We had huge numbers. So this year, on our own initiative, we decided, spoke to Pat and we said, look, we'll drive on and we'll try and do it. We had huge crowds walking around the field here. For every, they were running around it day and night. And we, as you can see, we had a new development. We have lights for the first time. They were only put in last year and we have another part of our development in AstroTurf going in there next year. But initially walking, and out of that in October, people are saying, what are we going to do for the rest of the winter? So we decided, in conjunction with everybody that was doing it, that uh, we'd stay walking. So every Wednesday night, um, part of um, Operation Transformation, it turned out to them, we walked November, December, January, February, and as you see the beautiful mountains, you've taken pictures of all night there, there's loads of loops walks, so we were doing them uh, every week for probably right up till the end of April. Um, and people come at a specific time, or everyone doing their own time? Um, for the laps, ever and you could do the laps during the day around their own time. But we had a designated time on a Wednesday at seven o'clock, and we do a designated walk every week. Um, and we had huge crowds like work because that was for everybody. Again, like do you know, the day club should be for everybody. So like the community is huge, and lots of people like to walk. Parents, grandparents, they're there on the sideline support us. It's lovely to be able to do stuff for them as well. So they all came out and walked, high visits, and you know, we had leaders at the back and the front, and loads of the kids came as well. And look, we'll start that up again now, come the autumn, and we'll walk again right through the winter. Brilliant. You know, so it's fantastic. And we did the, the October one for charity. Um, again, you know, mental health awareness is huge, and I suppose mental health in young people is absolutely huge. So it, that's our month here in Valley Bacon. And, you know, hopefully, this we're going to get people to talk to our young people because. You know, it is a big issue um, in young people, so you know very we're very much aware of it here. And another thing then, Pat, is the social hurling. Yeah, social hurling. Um, myself and Bobby Carrigan set it up. Um, it was something I, I spotted on, on social media and I got on to Bobby and I said, this is something we should do. And um, we, we went at it on a Wednesday night from 8 to 9, more so over the dark evenings when there's nothing else going on and a lot of the training is finished. And um, we just, we just put a, a group together and we put a few people into it and we got good numbers and we have 18, 19, 20 people coming out, men and women, and we're just having a laugh. It's just it's just a bit of fun really more than anything for an hour in the evening. It's like. And would you kind of play matches or train? Oh, yeah, we do a few drills just to warm up and then we wouldn't call it matches but we call we call it helter skelter or something like that but it is a good bit of fun like it's just for people that have nothing to do really and just want to get out and, and get away from home for a while and just have a bit of crack and a bit of fun and it is brilliant it really is a lot of parents are doing it that have kids involved in the club and stuff like that and it's starting to get more and more each time now you look it up on Facebook or Twitter and you see more groups are doing it and more clubs are doing it and it's fantastic to see like yeah now joined by two coaches here in the club, Fiona and Bobby. Uh, under 10 training going on here, how's it going Fiona? Flying it now, yeah, they're getting on great. And have you any had matches or blitzes Bobby lately? Or? So yeah, it was a very good blitz in um, Cashel, Cashel and Carmel's round one about two weeks ago. Mm. It was really good now, we had, we had two teams at that, um, that was a good night. Poor and normal conditions, but uh, it was great. It was great to have them out with them. And is this your first time with the, the under 10s, Fiona? Or? Yeah, I had the under 8s the last couple of years, but um, the 10s are this year. And what about you, Bob? You coached them before? Yeah, I've had a couple of the teams. Um, so I've the under 10s this year, and I'm with the juniors as well. And it's debatable now which ones are, are, are the better ones. You know, the under 10s <laughs> are showing some great promise. I, I, we'll, we'll, we'll have to check the juniors later on and see how they're going, you know. 
Okay, speaking of the juniors, Fiona, I know you play with the juniors. I think yeah. you only started last year, was it? Yeah, yeah, we started the team when he started up last year, so we were a few of us kind of roped in to bring the team together. So So you wouldn't have played underage with Barry B? No, 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 the club wasn't even going, I'd say, now when I was of that age, when I was the lad's age there now, it wasn't yeah. even going. And had so. you played any camogie at all before? Or? Uh, only through, kind of coming up through primary school and that, but once primary school finished, that was the it. So how many years would you have gotten without playing before you came back last year? Oh, too many to say now, to be honest. <laughs> A lot, a lot, a lot. We, we, uh, a lot more in the teens, we'll put it that way. Yeah, and so what was it like coming back playing? Uh, it was strange, to be honest, but um, no, it was great crack at the likes of Bobby and Grony and that now, they really kind of brought us on and so they welcomed us in and there was no pressure put on us to start off with, you know, it was great, like so. And you're back training, obviously, again this year for the championship coming up again in the summer? We are, we are, yeah, we're looking forward to it now, to be honest. Yeah, so Bobby, what's, what's it like coaching here in, in the club? Uh, look, it's a fantastic experience always between the young people and the the older guys or the older girls as you move up along. It's you know it, it there's no one night the same. They're all different every single night. And I think Fiona has been very uh, very um, unkind to herself. Fiona is a product of our, of our academy system. She started off with um, is it Mano? Yeah. She started off with Mano and then she joined our social hurling group about two years ago. So we have a combined social hurling and camogie group that you play over the winter. And Fiona graduated through that onto the graduate onto the junior cycle. So, oh, very but, good. Yeah, very so she had to serve her apprentice. Oh she did, yeah. She was washing boots and cleaning up bibs and stuff like that. Yeah. Much, plenty yeah. of that now, plenty of bib cleaning from here jersey on out, yeah. And jersey washing, yeah. And Bobby, I'd say you're never not in the field because I know you're involved with Bill Mulaney and the Tip Senior team, the background team and how's that going? Oh, that's a, look. That's a fantastic experience. I, I'm absolutely privileged to be even to be even sharing the field with with some of those athletes and and Bill and his and his crew, Bill and Dinny and Dennis, Mary and 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 Carmel. It's a fantastic experience. Fantastic knowledge share amongst the group. They're they're so. Um, they're so kind with their time. With uh, you know, I I would be one for asking questions now an awful lot. And I suppose there's a couple of teachers among them, so they, they don't mind that too much. Being in detention one or two times, but aside than that, it's not too bad now at all. But it's a great experience, fantastic. I suppose we're recording this on a Monday. They have a big game Saturday. It's a do or die really, trying to get all three points against Cork. Yeah, that's look. It's a big game. Anytime you're playing against Cork is a, is a big game. But like that group is is more than well able for for that kind of a challenge, you know. And I think it's they're they're coming into their into their their their, their beast mode cycle now. I think at the moment they're you know there's some fantastic athletes as I said, some fast fantastic players, and just general team players in, in general. It's, like, it's a privilege to watch them in action. It's it's, it's unbelievable. Oh, and Fiona, speaking of Tipperary, any any players out here that you could see wearing the blue and gold in the future? Oh, there's a few of them now, all right. There's, there's definitely a few of them that would have it in the making, you know. You'd, you'd see if there's a few of them that would, without without question, are well able to kind of get stuck in and, Brilliant. you know, yeah, yeah. They're, they're good now. They're Great stuff. Good. Thanks very much, Fiona. Thanks, yes, Bobby. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we, we've had an absolutely fantastic evening here in Golden Bridge with Bally Bacon Grange Camogie Club and Hurling Club. We've met such wonderful people. It's been jam packed. It's been a very busy podcast. Best look, Kevin, editing it at all. Uh, fair play, actually, to Kevin behind the cameras there. Does all the work there with the sound and the video and all the editing. Um, now, for the first time ever for the Cogan Report podcast, we're going to see out with a song. So, to take it away, Neve Carrigan and a whole crew of people here with Sleeve Them On. Alone, all alone, by the wave was strand, all alone in the crowded hall. The hall it is gay, and the waves they are grand, but my heart is not here, here at all. It flies far away by night and by day through the times and the door that are gone. Oh, I never will forget the sweet maiden I met in the valley of Schliebnamon.